at the foot of Khufu's pyramid. The king's coffin was of aromatic cedar, a rare and precious wood. It's likely that little else would have accompanied it. The extravagant gold and riches we associate with Tutankhamun belong to a much later age. The coffin was unloaded on the quayside before what the pyramid texts call the doors of heaven. It was as if the last stone of the whole structure was being put in place, and the most important stone of all. According to the ancient ritual, the coffin would almost certainly have been taken to the subterranean chamber first, and then to the chamber above it. The final part of the journey would have been to take the coffin to the third chamber. It would have passed up this soaring gallery, once just a rough chasm of rock. At last, the coffin was brought into the upper chamber, the king's chamber itself, and beneath Nacht's great granite roof, it was laid in the sarcophagus. The great pyramid was about to fulfill the purpose for which it had been built. The king had finally gone forth among the indestructibles. This was the reason for locating the dark, still point all those years before. Because it never moved, the Egyptians revered that point as eternal, the location of heaven itself. They also revered the stars that circled it. Today we call them the circumpolar stars, but the Egyptians, awed by their constancy, called them the indestructibles. The Egyptians believed they had not just located heaven, but constructed the means to get there. And the proof of that fantastic ambition is built into the very fabric of the pyramid itself. In the north wall of the king's chamber, is a tiny vent, the beginning of a narrow shaft that penetrates through the mass of masonry to the pyramid's outer wall. It is trained like a telescope at just one part of the night sky, at the circumpolar stars, the indestructibles. Khufu's builders believed they had constructed a resurrection machine a machine that secured eternity, and not just for their king. So Himuno's blessing has proven to be true. The king will rise again, and Anu shall cause his pyramid to be good and sturdy. They too will rise with him. They will share eternal possession of his crown. In the name of the king, 
It's clear now. In the name of the King. Through us he became indestructible, and we indestructible through him. Yunu Karim A Deba myself all of us Egypt The king is gone but remains with us and we with him. As sure as the flooding of the Nile, the wheel continues to turn, and nothing and nobody can ever really be lost. In the four and a half thousand years that have followed, the Great Pyramid has been plundered and stripped of its outer stone. But it has endured, justifying, in a way, the faith of the men who built it. It's as close as anything on Earth to eternity. It has endured as a testament to what humans can achieve when they collaborate, and as a testament to the questions that humans muse about most. What happens to us when we die? And what should that mean for us while we're alive? They are the greatest of all questions. And the Egyptians built the greatest of all monuments by way of answer to them. <laughs>